Uh, the Director uh, of uh, Public Administrative Services, uh, Mike Thonero, uh, to come and uh, address council and address residents. I know we, uh, one of the things I, I did, uh, did want to mention is uh, our communication model uh, best is it seems to be through Facebook. Um, I wanted to stress something that uh, uh, residents found out today uh, through emails and they're very appreciative. I think they fall down literally sometimes when uh, they get an email within no time responding back to them. I, I just don't, I don't, they don't believe it almost that the mayor, the vice mayor, the city manager, uh, you know, other staff members are responding back to their uh, needs so quickly. Uh, I did get a very much thank you. I, I appreciate that. Uh, but one of the things that today was mentioned was uh, they didn't realize that Facebook was, uh, you know, was a main thing. We got a ton of hits, a uh, ton of likes, ton of new follows. But what I wanted to stress there is that uh, you do not have to be signed up on Facebook. So hear me clearly, it, it doesn't matter. If you don't have Facebook, that's okay. You can still follow the information on the page. Uh, so uh, Beaver Creek uh, Facebook page, I think it's called Beaver Creek City Hall. Uh, Facebook page. Uh, you can go uh, and uh, go there. Actually, if you go to our website, beavercreekohio.gov, where you see the uh, logo of Facebook, you can click on that and that will take you to our page. Again, you don't have to sign on. Uh, it won't let you comment and like things if you're not signed on, but if you just want the information like what we did, I think within three days we did updates uh, to the residents, three different updates on what was happening with the road conditions. Uh, so that was very important information uh, to follow. So I just wanted to throw that out. But I'm asking uh, Mike uh, to come forward and uh, explain a little bit of the uh, process. And uh, take it away, Mike, please. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Vice Mayor, members of City Council. Happy to be before you this evening. Uh, as the City Manager said, our, our goal is to try and be as transparent in the process as we possibly can and try and educate folks as to what's going on uh, with our roadways, uh, particularly during a, a snow event. So it's been a little while since we've kind of talked through this progression, so we thought it would be a good opportunity for um, us to have an opportunity to share with the public some of the things and some of the things that we look at as we're looking at snow events. And then we'll kind of dissect uh, uh, an example, one, one recent event, our, our President's Day event, to kind of talk through that so that uh, both City Council and the, the residents at home who are watching have an understanding of why we're doing what we're doing. Uh, the first thing we wanted to highlight is, is what our actual goal is. Uh, when we outlay uh, our snow plan each year, this is our goal, safe passage for, for residents and commuters to be able to get places safely uh, while providing the best conditions possible and being both environmentally and fiscally responsible. That's, that's our goal. That's how we kind of outlay, outlay this uh, process. Different conditions require different events. Uh, sometimes we're pre-treating, uh, putting those lines down on the road, depending upon the weather conditions or depending upon what winter event is actually coming. Uh, sometimes we're preparing for ice events or kind of a sleet event. It's usually an event where there's not any snow, but there's just ice. Uh, sometimes we're preparing for snow with minor accumulation. We consider minor accumulation less than two inches. And sometimes we end up with significant events uh, with accumulation greater than two inches. Uh, finally, and as was the, the case most recently, uh, you can have compounding events. So we may have several events uh, in a row one right after another, and certainly that requires another set of actions as well. Uh, we prioritize our roadways in different ways, and I've just provided some examples so that uh, folks at home could kind of get a feel when we talk about these designations for roadways. We uh, kind of put these roads in a priority, starting with uh, the most important, our expressways or freeways. Uh, residents in our community would think about that as like 35. Uh, then we start to look at principal arterial roads, examples are North Fairfield, Indian Ripple, Dayton Xenia, and then start to move through major arterials like Alpha Bellbrook and Haynes, uh, down to commercial collectors. We've given the example of Beaverview and CJ Drive. 
Uh, and then down to residential coll collector streets. Those are um, residential streets, but um, start to have a, a little bit more higher traffic count. So examples of those would be like Lakeview or Patterson. And then finally, we get into residential or neighborhood streets. And I want to be clear that while it's snowing, we're addressing the freeway, the principal arterials, the major arterials, commercial, residential collectors, if we can get to them. And then after it stops snowing, and only after it stops snowing, will we start to get into the residential or the neighborhoods. So um, why do we do it that way? You know, what, what is our process? Why is that kind of established? Uh, our focus is on the main roads first and then move through that progression. <coughs> Bless you. So that we have the opportunity to address roadways with the highest volumes and highest speeds first. Uh, addressing neighborhood streets that have uh, less traffic and lower speeds provides uh, hopefully a safer condition and allowing us to address those primary roads first higher speeds, more traffic, uh, serving the greatest number of people. So that's kind of why we move through our progression the way that we do. Uh, a little bit of, uh, about our public service department, kind of by the numbers. Uh, we are the second largest city in the region, only second to Dayton, with uh, a little less than 600 lane miles of roadway and about 27.7 .7 square miles. Uh, we are a large community. Uh, when we talk about those um, routes and the kind of the progression that we move through, we have nine main road routes that we address first, uh, and then 18 different neighborhood routes. Uh, we have 18 front, front line trucks, which uh, works to our advantage. Um, and then uh, an average storm, we're using about 400 tons of salt. Our staffing level has stayed the same or stagnant for the last 20 years. Uh, the average storm uses, average storms are funny things, so when we start to talk about those averages, of course everyone realizes that that means that we have storms that are upward of 400, and of course we have storms that are less than 400, so that we end up with that total. Uh, just for example, we've had storms this year that have almost come up to 1,000 tons, so uh, storms can vary greatly. This is like death by PowerPoint. <laughs> it is like the worst slide that anyone can ever <laughs> stick up in the, in the entire world. Uh, but we wanted to kind of provide that little bit of framework that, that I just provided. That's the general operation, how, how we operate. Um, I, I sent the slide over to the city manager and he's like, wow, that's a lot of information, Mike. <laughs> uh, but I just kind of wanted to talk through so that residents could kind of see how that um, plays out and, and what that looks like. And again, the goal is just to try and provide additional information so that people understand what we're doing when we're doing it. Uh, so we highlighted the President's Day event. Uh, we had several events prior to this event. We had treated several events prior and our staff had been in uh, addressing salt and plowing and uh, of course an, an impact on our staff. Um, so we ended up with a compounding event for that President's Day event with future predicted events in the future. So at that time, we were anticipating additional snow. Uh, we had salt delivery that was uh, missed due to some supplier issues. It was missed on Monday. Uh, we did bring staff in on Saturday to receive salt because we were notified that if we could bring staff in that they would bring it to us. So we were able to accept, accept some salt on Saturday. Uh, knowing that we had an upcoming event, we split shifts uh, so we divided our crews into 16-hour shifts, which is a, a long haul. That's uh, two traditional work days for, for most people. Um, one thing I'll highlight about a 16-hour shift, that, that means you have eight hours off, but one of the challenges uh, our staff feels is that when, when you go home, you can't just go right to sleep. Uh, you've got to say hello to your children, you've got to get something to eat, uh, wind down just a little bit and then you shut down and try and get some sleep, and then you gotta set that alarm, get ready to go to work, shower, and then of course your commute time back in. So it really does take a toll on our staff, uh, but we like that 16 hour shift because we get some overlapping schedules and get some, some multipliers in force. So uh, in this particular event, uh, it snowed till around 11 a.m. on Tuesday. Uh, main roads that were cleared, uh, we cleared main roads and cleared the entrances to the main uh, neighborhood streets and anything coming out to an arterial or arterial collector 
because we realized it was going to be hard to get into the plats. Uh, we entered the neighborhoods around Tuesday afternoon. Uh, at that point, uh, it was clear that we had cold temperatures coming and our, sh our supply for salt was short. Uh, next unknown delivery was unknown and we decided not to salt uh, neighborhoods and use salt sparingly. Uh, we completed clearing the neighborhood roads by early Wednesday morning without salt, so uh, a lot of folks saw um, plow happen. Of course, it just skimmed off the top and wasn't all the way down to black. And a lot of times folks have the impression that if you're not all the way down to the asphalt that the plow didn't come through. Um, because that's been the standard that we normally provide here in this community. Uh, we touched up and cleaned up the neighborhood's roads, uh, started to address some mailboxes. We do, uh, if residents have mailboxes that are impacted, we'll provide a temporary mailbox for them so that they can get that continued mail service. Uh, and then eventually we fix them once, once that all comes down. Uh, Wednesday evening, we got called in for the next compounding event again and uh, had a future predicted event over the weekend again. Uh, Thursday we got some salt, so we were able to get into the neighborhoods, salt. At that point it was pretty hard packed. Again, we could plow over the top, skim off the top, throw the salt down, and once that salt started to work, uh, it started to really slush up. But again, it gives that impression that because we couldn't get all the way down to the asphalt, that we hadn't plowed at all. Um, so. After that, we ended up back in the neighborhoods again on uh, Friday, plowing and salting for a third time. Um, and we're looking ahead a little bit for a potential future event that Sunday. When, when we left on Friday, we saw that there was possibility for ice or rain or snow, and thankfully it turned out to be rain. Um, but those are just some of the things that we're starting to look at as we're looking ahead. Uh, and then today, we're back in the neighborhoods, touching things up, plowing again and uh, repairing potholes, mailboxes, and, and going back and answering any questions and uh, responding to, to any complaints that we may have received again and addressing those. So um, that's kind of what it looks like. So the, the plan was kind of the front side of it. And then uh, one event, the, the most recent event, kind of was, I thought, helpful to go through to kind of explain what's happening and, and provide that transparency. Again, uh, th thanks to uh, City Manager and City Council for, for all of your support. Uh, it is really appreciated. The staff certainly appreciates it. Um, I want to thank the residents, too. We received lots of kind words and compliments and uh, some thank yous along the way as far as uh, some, some food and kind words. We also received some comments that we could do some things better, and we, we want to learn from those and, and try and get better. So we listen to those comments as well. Uh, finally, I wanted to thank our public service team as a whole. Uh, I'm very proud of the work that they did, our frontline staff that answers all the questions, our administrative team that helps put the plan together, and then the guys uh, out front in, in the plows. If I could, uh, Mayor, I'd like to just add one more thank you, if I could. Uh, th thank you to you all for, for all that help uh, and, and all the support allowing us to do what we do. Thank you for that. Um, and then the last thank you is you know, life still goes on for these guys. Um, their spouses, their families, they also give a lot uh, during these long 16-hour stents. There's still doctor's appointments. There's, there's still activities that kids need to go to, and that does put a, a heavy burden on the rest of their family as well as they're putting in all those hours here. So I'd like to, again, thank the residents for their support. Thank City Council and, and uh, um, the public and public service team. Happy to answer any questions that, that you guys have, and uh, if there's not, I'll go ahead and turn over the rest of the report back to the city manager. Thanks, Mike, and uh, spring's right around the corner. Right. <laughs> We're excited to be, pl be cutting grass, I can tell you that. <laughs> I, I will say uh, that, uh, thank you, Mike. I will say that, you know, he mentioned 18 frontline trucks. Um, Keep in mind, we basically have 21 operators. We had one on a surgery, so we had 20 crew members. And uh, you know, the day day or two before the major event, you know, we we quickly quickly forget about overnight when we have an inch or sleet or rain that our guys get called in and they're out all night and didn't work all day. 
Well, that happened like two days in a row before the major event. Then comes a major event and he said, okay, guys, you guys ready to get out there? And their response is, we've been out there. We're already exhausted. Um, you know, it's a good thing that, hey, when that inch or two inches happen overnight, that everybody's oblivious that it really happened because we took care of the roads for them. Uh, but when a major event comes, and that's when un unusually like this happens, we had to split into the two crews. And when we had to split into the two crews, uh, remember those 18 trucks? Well, if you, in our instance, we had 20 crew members. You split 20 into 16-hour shifts. How many do you have? You have 10. So you have 18 trucks and only 10 crew members. So we don't have the staffing is what I'm trying to say. When we go from 7 to 3, basically, we're 100% staffed. And then you have a crew that stays over eight hours and then a crew, they stay till 11. Then you have a crew that comes in 11 and stays uh, till seven. And then they stay the eight, the eight additional hours. That's how those 16 hours with the eight hours in the middle of the day overlapping. So during the middle of the day overlapping, we have full force of the 18 trucks we're running. But during the night, overnight time period, you're only partially, you know, you're probably 60% uh, staffed at that point in time. Uh, normally this isn't, you know, when we have a one snow event and out and gone, our crews stay on it and some, some guys we see have 24 hours straight uh, or more. And it's a safety issue, so when they've already been out there 20 hours or so and then the major events happen, we had to make a hard decision that, okay, we need to break into crews. And uh, this is the first time we've actually did it. Uh, they had to have several <laughs> I would say emergency meetings uh, to figure out how they were going to tackle this. And uh, so part of that, just keep in mind, the uh, same staffing with the growth of the city, growth of roads, growth of traffic, uh, <coughs> same staffing level since uh, for about 20 years. And also keep in mind that uh, the levy increases that we have had uh, in the past for additional streets have went into capital, not into staffing. So it's went in, not into additional staffing, but additional asphalt, additional projects. So just wanted to point that out. That's what kind of really happens. And then on top of that, causing us a little bit of a delay into getting into the neighborhoods because you're not fully staffed the entire time. But then to, to find out when we're getting ready to go in the neighborhoods, we have no salt uh, or very sparingly. That just was an a insult to injury already. But uh, I'm really proud of the job the guys, the crews did, outstanding. They worked hard, and I can just communicate to uh, the residents that they care about what they do. They really care about what they do. Uh, they love what they do. Uh, probably not so much uh, working uh, 60, 80, 100 hours in a week, care at the end about <laughs> as much. They're tired and wore out. So they needed uh, some deserved rest and they, uh, over the weekend. And this morning they went out starting to do the mailboxes and cleaning up any piles that were pushed in the wrong area. Please contact Public Services if you have any other uh, questions. We'll uh, be glad to address the issues from them.